All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. Private equity powerhouse Apollo, which of course is the parent company of Yahoo Finance, is making a $760 million investment in legendary entertainment. Legendary has produced and co-financed top grossing box office franchises such as Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong. For more on the deal, let's bring in David Samber, partner and co-head of Apollo's private equity business. David, nice to see you here. Big deal for Apollo. Uh, why'd you make the deal? First of all, thanks a lot for having me on. It's good to be here. Um, I don't think this is necessarily an out of favor view. I think everyone that's watching this is probably engaging in streaming media in some way, shape or form, but there's been such an explosion of demand for premium scripted content that this has been a big theme of ours that we've been trying to invest behind. And this deal is a very Apollo-esque way of doing it. It's partnering with an industry leading business, but in a way that is downside protected, creatively structured, but it all does start with the quality of the team, Mary Parent, Chris Albrecht, and of course, Josh, the CEO, and this amazing marketplace and demand for premium scripted content. David, is this more a play on the, the outlook for streaming over the next decade or more so the return of the box offices? So I think for this business, they've been able to really navigate uh, the changing landscape quite well. This business is, is a producer of content that could go either through the theatrical window or the streaming window, and in many ways is a beneficiary of streaming. Um, so we'll benefit regardless. And I think this is one of these deals where it's quality over quantity. If you look and you can see uh, some of the titles that are up there, you know, these are some of the most well-known pieces of content that have been produced. And Dune's a great example of something that has substantial value in the theatrical window, but also has value in the streaming window. We've seen a lot of, uh, to your point, we've seen a lot of movement in this space uh, recently at Blackstone and Candle, but their bet seems to be uh, more of a, a naked bet on growth. How is this different? Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. I think that's an interesting way to think about it. You know, Legendary's got a very valuable library and that library provides a nice stable base of cash flow upon which to invest and grow the business. Our capital is coming in to support the growth of the business, all of the new content that's going to be produced for the various streaming platforms. You know, this is a world-class business. It's, it's what I wouldn't say is kind of a bet on growth per se, even though there is a lot of growth. Um, it's a different type of business in that this business, again, has a very valuable in-place library that we're financing and then has this upside optionality around growth. So it is a little bit of a different way to play somewhat of a similar trend, but again, in a way that is very consistent with our way of investing, which is downside protection with real upside participation. I found it interesting, David, what, uh, what you guys noted in the press release here. You see the opportunity for M&A uh, to bolt onto this. What, what might be attractive here? So there clearly is a consolidation happening in production. Um, you know, I don't think that size and scale in and of itself is required. If you think about the streamers, I do believe that you're going to see continued consolidation on the distribution side. And you're seeing that, you know, with the Warner Discovery deal, for example, and I think over the next several years, you'll see more examples of distribution consolidation where it makes sense. I think on the production side, being bigger could help. And we're going to partner with the management team to find ways to consolidate the business. But this is really also a quality play. Um, it's that real premium branded content, things like Doom, things like Jurassic World, things like Godzilla, that Legendary can provide that's becoming more valuable and more scarce. If you think about, for example, new subscription signups for streaming, it's been well documented at this point that, that the occasion that drives the largest amount of new streamer signups are big tentpole releases. Things like Dune, for example, drives tremendous engagement on a platform like HBO Max. We develop and produce and package up that content in partnership with streaming partners. And that's in more demand than it's ever been. So it's really size helps. And I think scale will make this business better. And we're happy to partner with the team to find scale, but it also needs to be quality. Well, speaking of scale, David, uh... Apollo is starting to become a major player uh, in media. Of course, this transaction with Legendary, of course, of course, uh, the transaction uh, with Yahoo, also Cox. Would you ever consider combining all these assets under one roof? And then how does the knowledge share work inside the companies? 
Yeah. So media has been uh, one of the key verticals that we've been investing in for the past 31 years. We've owned, for instance, Charter Communications, one of the largest cable MSOs in the country. We owned AMC Theaters twice. We currently own Cox Media Group, a large television broadcasting business. And then, of course, you mentioned Yahoo. I think when we think about our portfolio, the insights that we derive from these businesses and the relationships we have clearly add value to each individual company and add value to our ability to source, underwrite, and structure these transactions. I don't really think that you would see these businesses being combined, per se. The only reason to combine these businesses or any of our businesses would be if we ultimately thought it made the individual businesses better and probably help them go public or be exited from a capital markets perspective. But I do think there are opportunities for some of these businesses to share uh, with each other. For example, um, could Cox Media Group's uh, broadcasting assets potentially benefit Yahoo? Uh, could Yahoo Finance or other types of Yahoo uh, media content, produced content, be utilized in Cox in their uh, analog broadcasting business? So I think where there are abilities to, to create linkages, uh, we're very happy to do that and create win-wins for our portfolio companies. But when you think about each one of these platforms, I think we all know that Cox is going to be a broadcast business. Legendary is going to be a premium producer of scripted uh, film and television content. But the ability to provide value behind the scenes, I, I think, is something that we're able to, to do as a large institutional owner of these businesses. And lastly, David, uh, of course, this deal comes really before... Uh, we get that changing backdrop of, of higher interest rates at some point, whether that's in March or uh, the months after that. What's your take on how those higher rates might impact deal activity? So for deal activity, I think it's a little bit complicated. I think in general, volatility is not a friend of deal markets. Um, but we're in this phase now where the credit markets have been much more resilient than the equity markets, which I think for us at least creates an interesting paradigm where the value of companies that we might've been looking at has re-rated negatively, which is a benefit to us as a buyer, and then financing markets still are solid. So as I look out at our pipeline going forward, I'm actually quite excited about this type of volatility, um, which reduces the value of companies from an equity perspective. And we still, if we have a long-term perspective, and we're comfortable investing in periods of volatility, which we are at Apollo, creates an interesting deal dynamic. Um, but I do think that if the first 30 days of the year uh, portend the future, we're all in for a little bit more of a bumpy ride, which again, for us at Apollo, we like. We're, we're quite comfortable investing in periods of volatility. All right, we'll leave it there. David Sambar, uh, Sambar our partner and co-head of Apollo's private equity business. Good to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot for having me.